Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 407 at scavengerlife.com. This morning I woke up. I was very excited. Yes. Grabbed a couple cups of coffee. Boom, boom. Yep. Jumped in my truck, went to the next town over to the uh, flea market. Yes. Which is one of my favorite places to scavenge after auctions. In my mood right now. Right. You know? Because it's a place you can go to one place and get a lot of different stuff. For cheap. The potential, at least. Yeah. For cheap. Thing is, I forgot it was Easter. So I go there and it's like... I uh, mean, look, you're walking out the door and I'm like, I don't think I'm going to tell him it's Easter <laughs> because I don't think I can stop him from going yeah, anyway. Yeah, I, I would have gone anyway, but it was about a quarter full uh, yeah. of vendors. And, uh, and, it's, and it's a great... And, you know, flea market is kind of a general word, but this specific flea market's the one I love where it's just like a an empty field. Yeah. I guess it'd be like in England that they call like a car boot sale. A car boot sale. Guys just pay a fee to the person that owns the field. They back their car or truck they up. They just open it up. Throw stuff on the table. Yeah. And it's like, go for it. Yeah. You know? And there's obviously the guys who like have everything like polished and cleaned and there's like a price tag on it yeah and they want ebay prices and it's just like i don't understand yeah. why they don't just sell on ebay i mean it's very i mean strange. they might sell on ebay but right they might not but the places i like to go to obviously is just like all dumped out junky go through it yep find the gems put it into a pile see how much if you want for that pile and it's always a good deal you're like five yeah. bucks okay great yeah but the reason why I really love it is there's nothing like face-to-face yeah. human interaction. Right. I think that's why I was so excited to go to today because the a weather in our area is finally, it's kind of springtime. So yeah. a little bit cool. Yeah. But this is just when it's like flea market time. Yeah. You know? Sunny. I mean, and we were like talking on the a forum about like, uh, you know, scavenging online. People were were, like trading tips about how they like buy on eBay. Right. And then sell again on eBay. Yep. And I think you could probably run a whole business where that's I think some people do. You do. But I really do. I mean, part of me, the point of this is the face to face. Yeah, I mean, it's you, fun. I think also when we go to the flea market, we're always like, "What is this thing? Yeah. Where did you get it?" You know. And I and actually, I love going. It's with you, but when I go, it's myself. I can take more time to talk to people. You know. <laughs> you think I'm impatient? Uh, I don't think you are as into like kind of chatting with no, people. No, I'm not. That's I for love sure. talking to the guys about you know because I mean these are guys who like I mean they're real. I mean we're all scavengers, but I mean this is like. I mean, they're like to the bone. Yeah, like, yeah. Older guys. Yeah. Been doing it for a long time. Just like grabbing stuff. Yep. They're just, you know, they 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 is live in the cash on, in their pocket, you know, like that's... Totally. That, that's what they do. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's so interesting. It really is like, we're just trading baubles, you know. Right, I know. Like, it's yeah. just like all these random things... And really, the items are almost irrelevant, you know? Uh, but I guess the only thing that is important is that they all, all these vintage, weird little items, you know, they've come from the, the minds and the hands of people that have come be, before us, and people find that it's valuable, you know? They want to remember what something looked like back from the 50s or something, yeah. you know? Or, I mean, that's like basically our whole business. Right. <laughs> I mean, some of the things you buy, you're just like, you know, why would anybody want this in this condition? And I think that's what's so crazy about eBay. Like when you sell certain things, I'm sure we'll talk about what we sold this week. You're like, somebody wanted it. I knew they would. But it's almost like we're buying and trading like humanity it's it's like we're remind i mean this is like yeah. real philosophical but it's like yeah. we're i was just thinking about that too that day like this is so crazy why am, this is such a crazy it's life we've created for ourselves yeah where i'm like up early and I'm just walking around and looking at all these little baubles but it's just because this is what reminds us about what who we are you know yeah there it is no, it's true. I mean, I, I feel that way when I'm shipping stuff sometimes. You know, someone buys a yeah. decorative porcelain creamer that they're not going to use as a creamer. It's like, yep. okay. Yep. <laughs> but 
it also just reminded me of how much I love our life. Like, yeah. it's this morning. I had so much fun. I, you know, I, I had gone to this town that as we know. I went to the local coffee shop. Yep. You know. Yep. I uh, spent a lot of time. You know, I had twenty five dollars. <laughs> that was my budget. <laughs> Because we sold an you, old... You almost walked out with less than that. Yeah. Because I was the one that had the cash. We sold an old fridge, uh, an old like... On uh, Craigslist. Little, little dorm mini fridge. fridge, yeah. So that was my 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 budget. <laughs> and, uh, you <laughs> know, I spent so a couple funny. hours spending $25 and I got a yeah. big Ikea bag full of stuff. Yep. People knew I was a, a serious person because I had my own bag, you know. Right. You were going to fill that bag up. Yep. That's, That's so fun. funny. So... I, I'm going to look forward to trying going to the flea market uh, yeah. more during this I think you should. Time. And I think it's important also for people who work with each other as partners, like live, live in and business partners, oh. to <laughs> do things on their own sometimes. Oh, yeah. Because I didn't want to go. Yep. Yesterday, I had a, some stuff I wanted to do, and I was super tired from just the whole week. And... You were like, I wonder if the flea market, like, you know, I was like, <laughs> feel free to yep. go at any time yep. because I am not interested. I, I'm not saying I won't always, you know, there might be one weekend where I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. You're always welcome to come with Right. Me. But there are yep. times where I'm just like, yep. I have other, look, I have over 150 things in my eBay scheduled drafts and quotes and I'm like, I got to catch up with that, you know? I have an employee, like, putting this stuff up. So there's things like that where I'm like, I just have to sit here and do that, you know? Yeah. So that's just a reminder. Everyone can do what they want. That's what we say in this house. <laughs> yes. Everyone, Everyone do, what, do they what they want. Everyone eat after what this, they want. After Everyone this podcast, do what they want. Everyone can do what they want. That's right. Okay, a couple things about our podcast a week ago. Yes. Uh, we were wrong, or, or or maybe I specifically had been wrong, and people, it reminded me, which is good. So I had said that PayPal fees were like 3.7% or something. Or something. Yeah. That's incorrect. People were like, they're what? PayPal fees are 2.9% plus 30, 30 cents per transaction. Yeah. I think I just had, I think I had once just kind of come up in my own little math that 3.7% percent is what it is after you add the 30 percent oh the, the 30 thir- cents 30 cents into it yeah, but anyway sort of, yeah. and we'd only brought that up because the ebay management payments is supposed to be 2.7 percent so it's 0.2 percent and they supposedly don't have a per transaction fee okay so, so it's kind of a little less and or it's the same <laughs> and actually i did the uh, numbers that the thirty per the thirty cents per transaction that paypal does that costs us about sixty dollars a month because right. we sell about 200 items a month. Right. So, that, uh, hey, they're making money. So, That's if what it the is. eBay managed payments doesn't charge that per right per transaction, that would be pretty that good. That would help, yeah. Anyway, so anyone that, that's actually in that managed payments program now, I'd love to hear if your fees do seem cheaper. Yeah. Uh, okay, the other thing is, is we were talking a week ago about disposable income right this idea that in the, in the especially in America right that we all have disposable income after we get paid right we pay our bills our rent and, and then that's there's over. extra cash and it's disposable some people, people said discretionary yeah, people didn't which really, is a better way of saying yeah, it yeah people didn't really like that word well, and I don't like saying that word it's more discretionary and i guess it's more of a uh it's the same thing, just a different award for it. But yeah, where it's income, where if you can save it, you can spend it. Right. And also, I think some people kind of, and I don't blame them. Anytime we talk about like being frugal, like I don't want people to ever think we're like wagging our fingers, like you aren't allowed to spend money. You know, right. you can't spend money. Right. People were like, I like to spend money. You know, I like to. Well, treat I like to go out to eat and, and you know, stuff. Right. Like I'm buying experiences. <laughs> Right, so I think I think p- part of it is is we're not saying you can never do that. It's this whole idea, and we know lots of people like this, and I know other people who listen to this podcast know lots of people like this, where they're 
in air quotes, treating themselves all the time. Yeah. And they have no money to do anything else. Well, it's, you know, it's just this culture we live in where you see, you know, um, you know, advertisements. It's right. always just buy, 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 right, buy, right, buy, right. buy. And, um, yeah, so we were just talking about how, yeah, we don't really see our income as being disposable. But discretionary, that's a good I like word that for word it. Because we treat ourselves... As well. Yeah, sure, sure. It's a good thing to do. But we just don't. And also, it, it, it's when treating yourself becomes not treating yourself, and it just becomes part of your lifestyle, right. where you're like, yeah, I go out to eat three times a day, every right. single day, every single day of the week. Right. Um, and you're like, okay, yeah. uh, great. Right. You know. And look, some people have the money to do that, and hey. that's fine. People can do what they want. Be, spending money is not a moral judgment, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay. The other thing is, is um, we were talking about eBay and I had said it was, I didn't say it was passive income. It's like semi-passive and you always are like, it's not passive. I know. Yeah, it's not no, passive. It's not passive. Simplicio. Simplicio. <laughs> I always say it wrong too. On the a forum. Yeah. He said he likes to think of eBay as deferred income oh. which is a great way to think about yes. it you know it's, that's right it's not passive right by any means but it's also not like like completely active right because, like i did nothing on ebay today right because my point is is like it feels kind of passive because you do all the work up front right you front load it and then stuff sells over time right so i like the way he says because it is deferred income you do all this work up front we don't get paid for it immediately right but things in sell over for us at least years (laughs) right several years (laughs) uh and that's a good way to put it you know i like that a lot deferred yeah so he says it's like spinning up a flywheel yes and then you keep it spinning when if you need to 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 do other stuff and i i kind of said the same thing it's like an engine you kind of build this engine up. You know, you, you give all the pieces, you build the engine up, you get it going, right. you do the its processes and everyone knows what they have to do. Then when when the motor starts, it does kind of run itself. Right. You just always have to be oiling it. Exactly. Doing this. Yeah. Pouring a bit of fuel in right. it. You know. Well, it's like I said, you know, I've been doing other stuff all week and right. I'm like, I need to sit down and list stuff on eBay. Stuff's still selling. Um, and my employees still taking right. photos and we, we were, we did a little bit of sourcing yeah. and, but yeah, there, but, but it's not, it's not eight hours a day right. from 9 a.m. Like so. it was in the early day right. when we front loaded all the Which work. Which we did. Yeah. You know, and right. Exactly. And then the other thing I just want to talk about before we do our numbers, not giving up. Not giving up. Never give up, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. We've had a bit of a stressful week. Yeah. Not on eBay, but on our other business, and that's running our rentals or specifically doing a renovation renovation of our latest uh, property. But it it has everything to do with eBay. It's just like with any business. I feel like we're in that period of our renovation where it's really getting expensive. Where it's like... It's expensive. We're like at the end. Yeah. The last third... And that's when if you start being like, man, this is a lot of money, like yeah. more money and more money and also just time and effort. And it just seems like it's taking a long time and you just want to be like, I just want to stop. You know? I just, I want to be done. But the thing is, we know if we push through, yeah. we'll then have the thing, this new little engine that it's, we built. Yeah. That will generate income for right. us. But, and it's just like with eBay. I mean, I know that that's what it was like It's with us when we started doing eBay, you know? Just like it's a lot of work. Yeah. All the its processes ha- aren't in place. Yep. Where do we find stuff? Yeah. Do we want to keep doing this? Well, I think every renovation is like this. I mean, you get to this point where you're like, you're almost done. I remember with the last house. And then all of a sudden you're like, putting up curtains and putting in furniture and you're like, wait, whoa, we're taking photos for Airbnb because we're done. Right. You know, like it, it just, it, and then from here like, on whoa. out, there's no more. Yeah. You're just renovating. like done. We're I mean, just like cleaning sheets and, and doing sweeping the floor. Right. Yeah. But other than that, it's good to go. Yeah. I mean, so 
Yeah, I think with any, it's business. It could be anything. Yeah. It's always stressful and difficult in the beginning. And sometimes it's difficult to see if it's worth the time and our right. money. But if but if we can lay down that foundation, we know that it pays off in the end. Yeah, you know? it's just, it takes a while. And yeah. this week we had to pay a bunch of really large bills. That's always what stresses me out, where you're like, how much do we just pay though? Yeah. Oh my like, God. wow, that just wiped out our account. Like, my you know? account is like... <laughs> but again, it's deferred income, you know? Right. We pay all this money up front for a, a renovation, and right. then it'll pay itself off. For the rest of our lives, basically. basically. till we die. Yeah. Like, that's or, the plan. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Dying is our plan, right? <laughs> you better plan on it, because it's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. What's the gut reaction to the Um, $1,500. That's my gut reaction. Okay. How did it feel? Busy? Slow? Um, Are you sad? Are you scared? Nervous? Medium low. I don't know. Is that the <laughs> Medium low? Yeah. It definitely felt... I mean, I feel like this is becoming a common theme, but for the past couple of months, it has just felt kind of soft. It's as soft. you know, we we've been yeah. in our community, we've been trying to get away from slow and fast. It's like and, cream cheese. Yeah, Wah. it's just like sales are <laughs> sales are soft. Yeah, uh, and actually, on the forum, Mark S brought this up. He was he shared his numbers from from a year ago yep. and he was like i have more stuff in my store right my sales are down from last year yeah uh you know what's going on like yeah. what can i do you know and people are going back and forth about just and i think the end of the day a lot of us were just like what can we do it's, it's retail yeah i mean you can the only Power we have is what we we sell. Right. So if you feel like your sales are down, and maybe stop selling so many clothes, or start selling something or else. Start selling then, more clothes. Or, yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, but you know, we've been selling long enough on eBay where this has just happened. Where there'll be a years where just sales aren't as good. Yeah. And then the uh, next year they are. And right. I don't know. I mean, we talked about it a few weeks ago. You know, some people are speculating that we are going to be in a recession or we are in a recession. Yeah. So I don't, I mean, yeah. or the other speculation from sellers is there's more competition on Etsy and right. Poshmark and Mercari, blah, 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 blah. There's also speculations. I, I love that word right now. <laughs> yeah. About taxes. That right. this year, a lot of people didn't get as much in their taxes because they didn't get as much taken out of their paychecks. No, they got more take. Right, yeah. they didn't get as much taken out of their paychecks. So they didn't get as Sorry, big of a rebates as they. Right, and in some states, some people actually got charged more because of less state deductions. So anyway, that could be it. Who knows? Anyway, right, you were close. We actually made. About seventeen hundred. Okay, that makes me feel better. So That's pretty good. More. That's pretty okay. So it's 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 like medium. Right. We medium. need to make a thousand dollars a week gross. Yes. Two thousand dollars a a week is like is comfortable. Awesome. Three thousand is like I'm buying a gold watch. We're laughing. <laughs> Just yeah. kidding. So seventeen hundred, not yeah. bad. Um, and the thing is, a lot of it was just not. I think for us lately, I mean, we sold 41 items. That's pretty good. So like almost six items a day. I, I, I mean. You know? So that's, yeah. so it, so it's not like we had days where we aren't selling anything. Right. It's just that a lot of it is just like not a lot of money. Well, and I had, $18. I had like three returns yeah. that came in. And, you it's know, true. just look, one lady returned a $40 like custom made gorgeous skirt. Yep. And told me it wasn't a skirt. You're right. like, what is going on? Right. You know. Well, that was under customer issues. Is that we? Yeah, we did yeah. get three returns by clothes. clothes. But like I say, if you live by the clothes, you, you die, die by, by the, the clothes. clothes. You're getting returns. Yeah. People say this isn't a skirt. They say these pants don't fit me, even though you gave me all the measurements and the size. And it's your fault. And so. well, a couple yeah. of them said just okay. didn't fit, but. So let's get back to where we we're at. So it's with our, our numbers about seventeen hundred dollars. Uh, average price was about forty one dollars. That's a pretty bad, good average price. But we had a handful of items that uh, sold a little bit higher, and that brought the price up. Right. 
So some of the things we sold were, we talked about a week ago, because we had done the podcast a week ago on Sunday, and we had woken up to all these sales, right. which actually counted for this week. So we sold $500, so a third of our sales this week happened last Sunday, and they were these a vintage Polaroid Parts pieces that's right from a enlarger right so and they got delivered and he hasn't said anything about them thank so. god oh you know it's so funny though i will say this like we had a video job down in florida and we were shipping some stuff home and i found this really weird l-shaped box um i guess it was for a tv stand a tv mount and I was like, that's so weird. I needed an L-shaped box, right? And I, I sent home these two, like, light light stands, tripods, and, like, all this other stuff in the other part of it. And I remember looking at that box thinking, when am I ever going to use an L-shaped box? Well, I yep. used that L-shaped box for this, yep. these two weird L-shaped Polaroid pieces, and it was perfect. We hoard our boxes <laughs> was like, on our shelves in our warehouse on yeah. top. We all throw big boxes we find, and thank God they come in handy. Oh, they totally do. We sold 12 pieces of clothing-like items, either clothes, jackets, shoes, shoes belts. So that right. was more than a fourth of Clothing our sales. Clothing and accessories. Yep. Yeah. So that's I it. mean, you know, yeah. We yep. still buy that stuff. We still list it. We still sell it. So yep. it's not a majority of our store. And but then just yeah, totally random stuff. Pieces of fabric. Yep. Playing cards. A knife. Perfume. Two knives, I think. Two knives. Uh, yeah. Remote control. Salt and pepper shaker. Just random. Yeah, just like... All over the place. So, but that's that's but what that's we love. Our store. That's great. Yes. Uh, okay. Scavenge of the week. Uh, we did go scavenging. We did go scavenging. What do we get? Just kind of clothes. We were doing. We went to a thrift store. Yes. Uh, and just got a few. You know, a lot of these times these days, a thrift store is mainly about clothes. I had but. some nice shoes. I found some nice shoes that time. My my. Other scavenge of the week was like a retail scavenge. We went to Costco and I I had on my list I had to buy a bunch more like we use white towels at our rentals. I needed white washcloths, hand towels and towels. Right. Cuz the season's about to happen and also we're about to have a third rental. And they had these great towels and washcloths and hand towels. Oh, oh so it's like uh so That was like a retail scavenge. I, I see what you're saying. Um so so like a scavenge for ourselves. Yeah, yeah it was our, yeah. well for our other yeah. business. So I will say at the thrift store we I went to, I kind of did the old Amazon. I, I went back to our old Amazon experiment where they had these new in box shrink wrapped toner cartridges for a larger like Xerox, and they were five dollars each. You know, it's fairly big box, yeah. and I took out my phone and I scanned it. Yep, I saw it. you scanning them, and they were like sixty bucks each. I'm like five bucks. Let's try bucks. it. Let's see. Uh, well, and it's funny because you put them in the pile for our person to take a photo of, but because but since it's a new like consumable. I just grabbed a stock photo off of the internet, and they're already listed. There you go. So I just have to put them in storage. But, you know, I have no idea if they uh, – I actually scanned it away with eBay and not with Amazon. Well, so that's I don't where know. we're selling it. Yeah. So. But, you know, Amazon does that thing where it tells you is it high ranking or a low ranking. Oh, right. So I don't know how popular they are. Well, so. a couple have sold on eBay, that model. Good. Uh, Xerox actually doesn't make them anymore. HP makes mm. that one. So I don't know if people are – particular yeah. about that model we'll so see. uh and then like you said customer issues we had three pieces of clothing returned um so we've been yeah. doing this thing because we do free returns yeah ebay gives us a little more a leverage yeah capability right to deal with the return yeah which is why you know I always just want to like turn off returns. Like when we get a, you know, a, a slew of returns, I'm like, oh, I just want to be able to like decline them. But, but, but you can't. Now these three, each one of them said we did something wrong. One of them wasn't. Okay. One of them was for fit. But when, but their reasoning wasn't that we did something wrong. They just didn't like the idea. Right. Like this woman said, so it was a wrap skirt. So essentially for people who don't know what a wrap skirt is. It's, I don't know what one is. Essentially what it is, is it's like a rectangular piece of fabric or a big square. 
and it's got two ties on either end and you wrap it around your waist and then the two you tie the two ties. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. There's nothing more to it. That's exactly what this skirt was. It's handmade. It's African right. uh, Dutch wax fabric. It's gorgeous. And she was like, this is not a wrap skirt. So right. the great thing is she's saying item not as described. I'm saying she just doesn't like it. So on the return, I say, just return the original price of the item and nothing else. She can fight that, but eBay will cover right. me. So my point was, yeah, because we only get that because we offer free returns, right? Yeah. They allow us to do that. Yeah. So we gave her all of her uh, money back. For the item. But she had to pay the uh, shipping cost. And now we have to wait to see if she fights that and then if she does then we can fight that you know right Right, exactly but most times it seems like people just see they got their refund and and, don't care yeah the the people who know how the system works and that's the only way that free returns for us work we do lose the money on the free returns because because we pay for the return shipping but at least we get the other half back yeah we we don't have to pay the original shipping anyway uh, yeah that's super like inside baseball yeah it's really okay Things we learned in the forum. So, let me say this. There's a young man who came on our forum. Right. It's a second time. He's like, I asked this question a while ago, but I didn't get the answer I wanted, or I didn't feel like you guys took it seriously. And basically what he's saying is this. Do you guys think that things are different now than they were when we started? To, right. You know, a decade ago. Right. Like, there's more competition. Like, he says, you know, I'm going to thrift stores, small ones, big ones, and I'm just not finding good stuff. I'm seeing more competition. Yeah. Everything's, it's more expensive. And, and, I, and yeah, period. Right. So, that was his question. Unfortunately, he, he doesn't ever write back, so I don't really <laughs> know. But this is what I'm thinking. And I think it's a good a question, you know. If you're someone new... Yeah. Selling eBay. Yeah. So is it different now than it was a decade ago? Are you asking me? Kind of. Yeah. Okay. So my reaction was, no, it's not different. Right. I'm different. Right. Well, I think the answer is this. Let's unpack this. I think, yes. I think things are. They are different. Different from a decade ago. Right. I mean, 10 years ago. There wasn't the iPhone. God, I can't believe it's been, you know, you know 10 2008 yeah people didn't have iPhones scanning stuff yet they didn't have computers in their pockets yeah I mean we we did have computers but but people that scanning application yeah. hadn't worked also a YouTube was still relatively new there weren't right. all these tutorials right I mean you know nowadays people can just go on YouTube probably spend an afternoon watching a bunch of haul videos you can learn how to list, how to shop, how to pack, yeah. how to do everything. I mean, there's like yeah. step-by-step tutorials right. that show you how to do everything. everything. And you can get up and going fast. I mean, when we started, you just saw people's eBay stores and it you tried like, to figure it out. How did they do that? Yeah, exactly. Let's experiment, you yeah. know. And it probably took us, I've said this before, 18 months to feel like we actually had like a store. Well, and income that was steady. Because we had to, I think, I think these days I see people get started on the a forum and they're like, I've been selling for three a month and I'm making, you know, a couple thousand dollars yeah, a month. Yeah, we're like, like, wow. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. So things are different that way. Right. I think also, uh, you know, Goodwill and a lot of uh, thrift stores are getting hip to the fact that they do have a lot of valuable items. So they're putting stuff online. They're pulling stuff yeah. before it gets to the floor and selling it online. Look, I, I search for certain things to to buy and right. sell on eBay also. And I see a lot of Goodwill stores. Right. I'm like, oh, I just bought this from Goodwill Seattle, yeah. you know. But I will say, though, at the same time, yeah. I think things are basically the same. The basics. Right. You know, you you find good stuff and it, you sell it. Yeah. There may be more competition. There may be more tools. There may be, you know, but right. at the same time, it's just the same thing. I mean, people have been scavenging and selling for thousands of years, right. you know? Yeah. So it's just, I don't know what to tell a young man like that. I'm assuming it's a young man. I don't know. Right. A young um, person. A, a young person. It's just person. like, I think one thing, because he seemed a little bit irritated, 
no one on this podcast and no one in our forum has ever said any of this is easy. Right. I think that's what he was frustrated by. And he might be thinking of other uh, YouTubers or uh, videos where they're like, you can get, you can make millions of dollars. Oh, I just, I just hauled $5,000 worth of stuff. Yeah. It's not easy. You know, I mean, you know, also with time, as we always say, you will evolve what is interesting to you and yeah. what you see selling. And and it's taken us time. I mean, we've gone back and forth between just selling clothes to selling hard goods to also selling clothes to selling furniture. Right. You know, there was a time where people were like, oh, I sell furniture all the time. And I'm like, I would never do that on eBay. And now I'm like, yeah, I totally do that on eBay. <laughs> you know, like it's right. – you just – you change what you're comfortable I with. I mean, that's what I think a lot of – people on the a forum were trying to share it's with this guy was that you just have to do things differently and right it's my point is like if there's a hundred of videos on a youtube that say where you can go shop at this particular place and buy right. i'm like i'd probably find a different place to, to go. go you know so yeah. if they're like go to goodwill bins i'm right. like yeah that's probably now going to be over saturated right but that doesn't change the fact that the great american fire hose of abundance and waste is still it's so pumping it out blowing i mean it is just <laughs> blowing stuff out i mean it just might not be pointed at the places that everyone's talking about and right. that's our fun challenge is finding out where that stuff is ending up where we can get as close to the stream as possible you know right we I used to always go to Goodwill. We don't really go to Goodwill yeah, anymore. Yeah, we went there a lot. And some people say they still go, and it's still fine. Yeah. And we just try and find different places to go, and yeah. that's what you have to do, I think. Yeah. yeah. And you just, for me, have to evolve personally because then it stays interesting. You right. know, you just have to keep finding if, if you're finding things and you're like this is garbage okay just yeah. go somewhere else you and know i get it on this podcast even we grumble sometimes yeah. and complain and we're like ah, oh, this sucks you know yeah is. but you know at the end of the day though ultimately it's up to us to have to figure it out right you know right so that's that's, that's all so i hope that that guy you know can find a way to scavenge that's fun you know yeah but that's Conti- really what continues to we be. have to to, to do you know and and for I me mean, it's about scavenging where i'm excited yeah it's like today, like today going to that flea market was super exciting for me yeah I had a great morning yeah you know it was fun i did too yeah <laughs> well, we are modern day do. hunters and gatherers yeah. yeah and then the other thing on the it's forum I think this person's fairly new. I don't remember ever talking to this person. Uh, it's before, but they said that they bought a painting for sixty five hundred dollars. Yes, six thousand five hundred. Right. That's more than I've ever heard any scavenger in our like to pay for an item ever pay for an item. Yeah. And I think it's a she, but again, I'm never sure. The scavenger said that they've been. Uh, it's researching this painting, put right. a lot of time into it, yeah. and they think it's real, and they looked at prices, and they think they can sell it for like fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, and they're going to try and sell on eBay before they send it to like an auction house. Right, they put uh, it up for yeah fifteen nine 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 sixteen thousand. Yeah. And I mean, I was asking this person all kinds of of things because. That's like my dream right. of like having more of a high end store where yeah. it you go and instead of having eight thousand items in a store, you, you have like a hundred, hundred really but high end. You're able to sell stuff and make yeah. you know ten thousand dollars. Right? Know? Would How would exciting. you ship it? Like, did you? I I read this conversation during the week, but who would insure something for that high? That's a good question. We we didn't get into that part, but I'm yeah. sure that's where you maybe find like. An art shipper, right? Especially if you sell to someone that's willing to pay fifteen thousand, they are not amateurs, so they must know how much a yeah how yeah. to ship it properly. Insure it, it's or if they're close by, you're like, I'm just going to drive this to you. Yeah, it's worth my time. <laughs> I mean, and I guess on that same topic, uh, another scavenger on the forum said that they had found this painting, and she had Big Sally. Yeah. And she said she was super excited and she showed pictures and people were like, yep, that's, that's, that's that awesome. person, you know. And so she sent it to Skinner's, an auction and house. She's in Boston. Yep. And 
it got there and they went to authenticate it and they're like, nope, this is a reproduction. It's a reproduction like, print. It's a, a very good print. It's like a colotype. I don't really a know that word. A cellotype? I don't know what yeah. it is. Yeah. Where it's like a photograph, but anyway. But like a high quality print yeah. because she or he couldn't tell with she, the loop. Yeah. Right. You know, with the jeweler's loop. To, yeah. So she's going to get it back and she's going to sell it. I mean, it's still... It's a high quality reproduction. Yeah, I mean, people still buy prints. Right. She's just not going to get the $15,000 or however much she was... Yeah. She's going to yeah. get for it. And, you know, and that's always interesting when we talk about art. You know, do you send the art to like an auction house and they're going to get, you know, all this money for it? Or do you do like the other person doing selling on eBay? Yeah. Like, why not? I mean, people sell... Very expensive things on eBay all Jewelry, the time. Jewelry, like, you know, gold. And then, yeah. because the problem is when you deal, it's with auction houses, there's the, a shipping. Yeah. And then they always charge a fee. No matter if it sells or not. They're charging a, you a fee. You know, they're they're going to charge you to authenticate it, and then they're going to charge you the fees to sell it. I mean, when when we've had stuff in auctions, there's like a catalog fee, and there's all like, this handling crap. fee it's really annoying. and then if it doesn't sell you got to pay to ship it back so it's really like you really want to make sure yeah yeah so anyway um i i think these days we're kind of just like you know what if it's something people want so to sell it on ebay, sell it on eBay. i mean for that oil painting not the big sally one but the other one do they have a certificate of authentication from someone? Mm. I have to. They they link to their listing in yeah. the in the forum. I, I feel like they said they got it. They got it authenticated mm. by someone, um, yeah. which would help. Uh, but then authentication you know, cost one hundred and fifty dollars, maybe dollars. you know something like that. I think I think that's the issue with like you know this dream, this fantasy of a high dollar store is that when yeah. you start getting into that kind of stuff, people want to start to know. Uh, a provenance and they want to right. know authentication right. right and i'm like yeah i got it from a guy like look out of the back of his car people ask us for <laughs> provenance on a 15 dollar spoon and you're like yeah uh yeah. i literally found it in the trash like yeah. what do you think i'm gonna say just to kind of finalize that idea i think really what everyone says and it's true like I think the fantasy of just having only a high dollar store yeah. with like and it's nothing else is kind of a fantasy because being able to find consistent six thousand dollar paintings itself for a fifteen thousand dollar quickly is difficult, you know. Yeah. Uh, like I, I, I've talked to people who are like, oh, I, I want to just have like hundred dollar plus items in my store, and I'm like, yeah, me too. Right. I think <laughs> definitely. It's, I think it's really just. I think a healthy store is a mix. You yeah. Know? Like having just bread and butter plus some high but dollar. But being willing to have the high dollar, you know. It's just I mean, I mix. sold some some Hobbit toys for eighty dollars. Yeah. I us yeah. you definitely picked those ones out. Yep. I don't know where those were from. I think it was a box <laughs> lot. Yep. Um. And I wasn't expecting that. I was like, yeah. oh, but, you know, they don't really make it. That brand doesn't make it anymore, I guess. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's kind of funny. So, yeah, it's about uh, having a mix of stuff. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's answer it, it question that people sent in or asked about. Okay, you can call our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. Or you can email us a file from your phone. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. Hi, Jay and Ryan. This is Tiffany from Indianapolis. I'm calling in response to your caller who uh, called in about the um, item that would be selling for probably over $1,000 and how to protect yourself. Um, so I thought I'd share my experience. Um, so I had the good fortune to come across an estate um haul about three carloads full of stuff for 150 bucks this was last summer and in that haul was a um 14 karat gold charm bracelet from the 1960s and similar items or similar pieces were going on ebay for in the thousands it depended on the gram weight and um, so I listed mine for $1,500 best offer just based on the gram weight that I had and um, ended up getting an offer that I did accept at $900 
um, I would say back in the fall, but then when I, when the, before the buyer actually paid their $900, they emailed me and said, will you ship to this address? And they gave me some story that their uncles, brothers, cousins, sisters, cat was sick in New York and they had to, you know, they weren't in Philadelphia or wherever. And could I ship it to New York? But it had a really weird address. It had like crazy numbers and so anyway, I consulted with some um, other reseller people that I have um, friendships with, and they said, oh, that is a scam. Um, what happens is, in that case, obviously, if you ship to the different address, you know, you lose the protection of eBay. So number one, that's a no-go. And then this this address was apparently some kind of international drop shipping. So it goes to this address, and then the item disappears, and it's shipped out of the country. So I responded to that um, buyer and said, you know, it's eBay policy that, you know, I can't ship to another address. You know, let me know. I'm going to, you know, unless I hear differently from you, I'm going to cancel this transaction. Well, I, he ended up not responding. And so then I canceled that transaction. But then I was lucky enough to sell this item, um, this bracelet, um, about a month ago. And I accepted a $1,000 offer. And of course, I was really nervous because it was my first highest item. And I'd only paid pennies for this thing. And so what I did was just to make myself feel better. I don't know if this would, if this would have helped with an eBay case or a PayPal case. But I did have my husband videotape me packaging up the uh, bracelet and um, putting on the labels and all of that stuff and the tracking number. And the other thing that I did is I did insure it. So I paid the extra money to insure it for $1,000 from USPS. And I also paid for a signature upon delivery. So um, for me, all of those safeguards made me feel better about the um, the transaction. And I will say it's been over a month now and the buyer has not given any me any feedback, but they also haven't opened a return or caused any issues. So I think I'm golden. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Thanks so much. So I want to say that she did everything perfectly right? in both of those circumstances. Yeah. If someone buys something from you and then they say, oh, can you sh actually ship over here? Especially if it's expensive, yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah, no. It's like the answer is, we'll change your address on eBay and PayPal. Right. Because eBay and PayPal will back you up if you have a confirmed delivery to the official address on that the was account. on the right. account when they paid. Right. And so then if it's a scam, it's not in your hands anymore. It's between, you know, the, the PayPal and eBay and the credit card company yeah. and not you. Yeah. So that's true. And... For something that high, yes, you want a signature. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think that they demand a signature after $750. I think they make you do it, yeah. yeah. And so eBay, it's not going to be manu you know automatically checked but on the label, but eBay says it's smart to do over $700. Um, yeah. So there's that. Yeah. And obviously insurance. Like yeah. if it's a gold bracelet, it's probably not going to break. But if it gets stolen or they open the package and it's empty, yeah. whatever, whatever they claim. I mean, I, I I get it. We talked about it a week ago. It's just if you're used to having a store and most of your items are $15, $30, yeah. you know, $100 is a lot of money. When you start to sell that first $1,000 plus item, it sort of gets nerve wracking. Nerve it's like there's a lot more Look, stress. this guy, this guy bought five different parts from that Polaroid camera and it was over $500. Um, and that made me nervous. You know, I'm like bubble wrapping these metal parts yeah. because I'm just like, I do yeah. not want this to be damaged. I did. I, I shipped it in two different uh, containers, two different boxes, but I, um, I insured them. So yeah, totally. I hear you. Yeah. But good job. Okay, that is it for the podcast this week. You can check out our blog at scavengerlife.com for the links we discuss and to join the conversation on the forum. You can leave a question or a comment, again, on our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486, or you can email us a file. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. We post an episode every Monday morning. On Wednesday, we post a What Sells video showing you what sold, how much it sold for, currently being brought to you by Stephen Schultz. 
You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube for free, so you always get the latest episode. You can buy our archive of five years worth of podcasts, and you can download it all and listen offline on your listening device. We are ending this podcast in In three, three, two, two, one. one. Bye.